All right, 2023 has begun. I'd like to thank God. I'd like to thank all my past clients and Jerome Powell for spiking interest rates higher than they need to be, therefore trying to crash all the markets. <laughs> Seriously though, guys, it was a crazy year, ups and downs, all that good stuff. But in this video, we're gonna be talking about what my predictions are for the Miami real estate market in 2023. So if you're at all interested in the Miami real estate market, you're gonna wanna check this video out. Jake Fletcher here with the Fletcher Group at EXP Realty, your Miami real estate agent. And in this video, I'm making my predictions about supply, demand, uh, what's gonna happen with the market overall, and of course, what everybody wants to know, what's gonna happen with prices, amongst other things. So definitely make sure you guys stay tuned to the end of this video. and. And let's go ahead and tune on in. So my predictions here, I've got five of them for you guys. The first one is that Miami is going to remain one of, if not the hottest real estate market in the world, okay? Now there's a few main reasons for this. Number one, Florida is a tax-friendly environment. That requires no state tax, no personal income tax, no capital gains tax for individuals, and no estate tax. Uh, so, you know, that's pretty awesome compared to a lot of states that do have those taxes. And uh, also not to mention property taxes rank below the national average, but those in Miami-Dade are slightly higher than the state average. So, you know, that part kind of balances out, <laughs> you know. Uh, another reason for this is the allure of living in Miami. We've got plenty of sunshine, great beaches, great weather, a billion events happening all the time. We've got some amazing nature that's super close by, some of which is even like in the city itself. There's some world-class dining, shopping, beautiful people. There's literally always something to do. And we have some of the most beautiful neighborhoods in America, okay? And those are just some of the reasons why there's so much allure of living here. And then my third reason for why Miami is going to remain a hot market is the continued demand that we have in Miami, the unrelenting demand, means that Miami is going to remain a stable investment, okay? And that, in and of itself, is going to continue to attract investors and, you know, mom and pop and, and uh, uh, you know, corporate investors alike. Uh, to the area. So that's a big thing, I think, personally. Um, your investment is pretty stable, pretty safe here. Number two, housing supply will remain low, okay? So as long as interest rates are high, sellers really kind of have less incentive to sell. And actually, believe it or not, According to redfin.com, roughly 85% of US homeowners have a mortgage interest rate that's below 5%, whereas right now we're at about 6.5%, okay? So why does a, sell, a homeowner want to sell uh, when they have a less than 5% interest rate when whatever they're gonna buy, they're probably gonna be at a six and a half or higher depending on their credit. Uh, could be lower if they decide to buy down their interest rate, but of course that costs money. So, you know, there's less incentives for sellers to sell. Now, another reason why, uh, you know, this is, Basically, I mean, supply has increased a little bit since the bottom of the market, uh, the bottom of the supply, which was in April of 2022. Uh, we only had 9,726 units for sale then. That's including single families, condos, townhomes, all residential property types. And right now we're at just under 12,000. So we were under 10,000, now we're at under uh, 12,000. So we, we've bumped up a little bit, but that's still a far cry from January 2019, the pre-pandemic uh, era, when we had over 25,000 units of supply, okay? So, you know, that's a big difference, okay? So I think supply is gonna remain low as long as those interest rates are still high. My third prediction is that sales will continue to be lower than the pandemic boom era, but they will remain consistent. So sales have already slowed a bit parallel with increased mortgage rates as they're pretty much inextricably linked due to the 1% to 10% rule, sometimes referred to as the rule of 10X, which basically states that for every 1% that interest rates increase, you tend to see prices decrease by 10% because buyers lose purchase 
purchasing power and vice versa. If interest rates go down, you tend to see prices go up by uh, 10%, 1% down, 10% up, uh, so on and so forth, okay? So we're currently at about the same amount of sales as we were at in May of 2020, when the market seemed almost frozen before things normalized with the pandemic and things took off again, okay? So that first little few months, if you guys don't remember when the pandemic first hit, the real estate market like shrunk up and, and basically came to a halt because people were like, oh my gosh, you know, what is this Armageddon, right? Um, now, this is not a great indicator, okay? Having that, uh, you know, amount of sales is, is not uh, what we wanna be seeing in order to have a, a healthy market, um, but, you know, it is what it is. We had about 1,500 sales in December of 2022 and about 1,425 in May of 2020. So we're pretty dang close to that. And this slump in sales is also tied to supply, okay? Which we just spoke about because you can have all the demand in the world, but if supply is severely limited, then people aren't just gonna buy whatever's available if they don't have to and if it's not what they're looking for, okay? This is, you know, one of the biggest financial decisions in most people's lives, okay? So now, number four, buyers will have less competition and be able to negotiate more favorable terms. I'm excited about this one. I'm already starting to see, you know, the sort of rumblings of this with co my clients that I'm working with, but I expect it, I expect this trend to continue and to get even more in uh, favor of buyers. A lot of people have been priced out of the market because of the high rates that we're talking about. So if there's less people in the market, you know, there could still be a lot of demand and a lot of people in the market, but you know, when you reduce that supply of buyers in the market, then, you know, you're invariably gonna have less less competition for whatever house you might be going for. Now, this is gonna depend on sort of the, the price range and the property type and um, you know the popularity of the area and a bunch of other factors, but overall buyers should have less competition. Sellers are gonna still be trying to get top dollar, but the deals are gonna be in the sale price, not in the list price. Now, I've been saying this in other videos lately, and I think it's going to continue throughout the rest of 2023, where you're not necessarily gonna be seeing like gigantic differences in what uh, people are listing homes for, but where you're gonna see the big difference is what they're actually selling for, okay? Now, this is probably gonna normalize and get a little bit, the, the gap between the list price and sale price is probably gonna normalize and get closer and closer as the year goes on because sellers are gonna be starting to realize, okay, you know, even though uh, Jim down the street sold his house, which was the same floor plan, et cetera, et cetera, uh, for 600,000 back in May of 2022, now here in May of 2023, you know, we realize that it's probably more like 550 or so. Now that is, um, you know, assuming that what we see is that, uh, you know, as the year goes on, the interest rates are going to continue to normalize and get closer to that five and a half percent range, which is what I think is going to happen. Now, by and large, buyers won't have to pay over list price. Okay, so this is great. They're not going to have to do things like waiving appraisals, uh, which is really not smart, <laughs> waiving inspections, and doing the kind of things in general that they had to do in the 2020 to 22 market in order to get the home that they wanted, right? In order to, to compete and win the bid. Now, um, buyers will also be able to get more uh, more concessions from sellers, such as, uh, you know, things like a 2-1 buy down or a 3-2-1 buy down to get a lower rate for the first two or three years, um, you know, which helps to make it more affordable. This is definitely a, um, a whole nother topic for another video, but uh, something that, you know, you only wanna do it if you feel like you're gonna be capable of handling it. Um, but yeah, you know, buyers are gonna be able to use tools like this, seller concessions and, and so forth to help uh, secure a home. And likewise, getting seller credits overall will become easier in 2022 as well. Number five, my final prediction here. This is the one you guys all were waiting for. What's gonna happen with prices? And my best guess, my prediction, my uh, you know outlook on this is that prices will increase year over year. I'm sorry, guys, I'm sorry, uh, but you know, 
I will say it will be more modest than in the past few years, okay? Now, based on the expectation that interest rates will decrease by around 1% or so uh, to that mid 5% range, like I mentioned, uh, you know, I think that demand will remain strong, as I mentioned before, and with that low supply, like we talked about, prices are going to increase by this time, by the end of 2023, okay? So you got low supply, you have strong demand, okay? Once those interest rates come down and make houses a little bit more affordable towards the back half of the year, that's only going to increase competition. It's going to increase the amount of buyers in the market. So the demand's gonna increase even more. Supply might edge up a little bit when uh, you know in, uh, interest rates get lower, but it's not going to be this onslaught of supply. And therefore I think prices are going to go up year over year. How much though, right? That my prediction, you know, and nobody has a crystal ball here, okay? But my gut feeling is that we'll probably see a net between five to 7% total, okay? That's not to say that median prices won't go any further down. There could be another 5% downward pressure from where we are now, which is about 7% down from the market peak in May, okay? So May, 2022, we're down about seven, 8%, depending if you're talking about condos or single family homes. So about seven or 8%, I think we could see another 5% downwards. So total, you know, you could be looking at anywhere from 12 to 13% if you time the market right. Uh, but I think that by the time the end of the year happens, you know, you will have gained uh, 5% five to 7% total uh, from where we're at right now, okay? So that's, we're down 7%, seven to 8%. We will probably end up being 5% higher uh, than you know the, the baseline, the zero, right? So if we made up the seven and then another 5% on top of that. So overall, that looks like about 12% up from right now, okay? So that's my prediction. Uh, and for historical context across all property types from 2019 to 2020, median sale price increased 11.5% to 340,000. In 2021, they increased 17.6% to 400,000. And in 2022, they increased 16.3% to 465,000 for condos and single family homes. So that's my opinion, that's my prediction. And if what that looks like in terms of numbers, if we take a net 6% increase uh, year over year, so we're going in between that five to 7%, just taking 6%, if we see a net 6% increase year over year, for single family homes, that would put us at 567,000 by the end of December, 2023. And for condos and townhomes, a net 6% increase would put us at about 394,000 by the same time. So that's it guys, we'll see, um, you know, in about a year, we can look back at this video. I'll do another video to see if I was right. Did prices go up, uh, y you know, another 5% over what the May of 2022 high was, five to 7% over that? Uh, did they end up going down another 5% from where we're at now, where we're already down seven to 8% from that May figure? What's gonna happen? Is supply gonna remain low? Will interest rates actually decrease by about one, one and a half percent? Uh, you know, will sales remain strong? Will Miami even still be a good real estate market by the end of 2023? We will be checking, uh, you know, in about a year. <laughs> so make sure that you subscribe, ring the bell, uh, hit the like button and share this video, guys. Over 90% of people who watch my videos aren't subscribed. And if you made it this far, there's literally no reason not to subscribe. Costs you zero dollars and zero cents. Helps me out a ton with the channel and uh, sharing it also helps out a lot. So I appreciate you guys. Much love. Thank you to everybody who watches my videos. You know, 2020 year, I really, uh, 2022 I was the year I really sent my YouTube channel off in a different direction and started pushing it hard. And I'm only gonna keep bringing the heat in 2023, amplifying and doing things bigger and better. But don't take my word for it. Subscribe and you'll see it for yourself. Until then, Jake Fletcher with the Fletcher Group at EXP Realty, your Miami real estate agent, guys. I'm here to treat you like family. Reach out anytime and I'll see you on the next one. Peace.